The Bengals added 10 players in the 2024 NFL Draft. It's time for our top takeaways, superlatives, and I go one-on-one -on -one with Bengals first-round pick Amarius Mims. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. He is Andrew Fox Miller. Like I said, Amarius Mims coming up on today's show. A very, very short man. You'll get that joke coming up in just a bit. But before we get to the Bengals' first round pick, shout out to the Big Play Network. Shout out to our sponsors, Tipico and Garage Beer. And by the way, you can catch this show every Tuesday at 8 Eastern right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, also weekly on Bally Sports. And Andrew, the NFL draft is in the books. After months of discussing it, after months of talking about it, the Bengals, they take a very, very large man in Amarius Mims, 6'8", 340, with the 18th overall pick. As far as takeaways are concerned, and our audience has certainly seen my takeaways throughout my reaction throughout the draft. Make sure you check out our grades, by the way, as well. Those dropped on Monday. What do you think? What are your top takeaways? What stands out to you the most? about the Bengals 2024 NFL draft class. Sure. Yeah. I mean, number one, and it's probably been said across the board with a lot of people following the Bengals draft risk, risk, mm -hmm. reward, obviously is what they're going for here, but risk, mm -hmm. whether it's injuries, whether it's character, whether it's playing time, it, it, there's just a lot there. There's a lot of questions, every single one of them, not every single one, but most of them, they'd make their pick and it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I can see the, the ceiling there, but, but risk would be probably my number one theme or takeaway from this particular draft in 2024 leadership would be another one. Now that's no surprise for the Bengals, right? Especially this era of this team under the Zach Taylor era, five of their 10 picks were team captains. It's, you know, it's all about going after the high character players, players that can be leaders in the locker room. I love that about it, by the way, of course. And then I would say the last thing would be positional sort of oversight we'll call it interior offensive line particularly guard i'm shocked they didn't go after at least one in this draft ultimately getting one they didn't and then uh running back to a certain degree too that surprises me in this draft you go after running backs i mean this is the time to do it where you're, you're dealing with rookie contracts and i'm very curious about what they're going to do to to answer for that this season and beyond no doubt right, let's start with the interior offensive line i think that's where a lot of people are i thought they were going to double up at offensive line, and they did, and they did add an interior offensive lineman, but it wasn't until round seven, and I agree with you. I thought there was one point where in round two, if the defensive tackles continued to fall off the board, that maybe interior offensive line was the route they go. I don't think it would have been the route they went because there was A.D. Mitchell was there. There were a couple of guys there, but they get Chris Jenkins, and I love that pick. I think it's the safest pick in the draft, and so I want to highlight that before – we get to all the risk because they clearly took some big swings and that's different than past years. And so this draft, th this could end up being the, the foundation, a foundational draft, much like 2020 was where they got Joe Burrow and then T Higgins 32 picks later. And then they are sweating to see if Logan Wilson's going to be there and he falls to them and they would have considered Logan in the second round for sure. And he gets to them in round three. And so those three guys, obviously, huge parts of what they've done over the past few years. I think that the Bengals view it that way with Amarius Mims and Chris Jenkins and Jermaine Burton, and they think that McKinley Jackson was a need that they needed to address. But to your point, whether it's Eric All, whether it's Jermaine Burton, even Amarius Mims, who I am really bullish on, more on him in a bit, I think the Bengals clearly were willing to take risks, roll the dice a bit, gamble a little bit, with some of these talents that we haven't seen them gamble with in the past. We just haven't. And, and so will it pay off? Time will tell. And if it does, they might have hit the jackpot. But there's risk involved. And I, I think the, the other takeaway and the surprise for me, and even though our mock draft, by the way, our mock draft, three picks right, just saying, three players right, two picks right. We got the first two right. We got Eric all right. We were just a, a round later. The fact that they kept all 10, and I know we kept all 10 in the mock, that's a bit surprising as well. I thought they were going to trade maybe their fifth, maybe their fourth, uh, certainly one of those sixes or sevens or both. And I, I, I think the reason they didn't, those guys weren't, or those picks, those assets weren't valued by the rest of the league. No one was really trading much in round six and seven. 
they didn't want those picks. The Bengals had a lot of those picks, and so they ended up using all 10 of them. They did. I, if you would have asked me to bet anything on whether or not they would trade in any direction, I would have taken every single time that they're going to do something with those picks. So, yeah, I agree. As far as takeaways, keeping all 10 was a surprise to me, for sure. It's time to hand out Bengals draft superlatives. We will do that coming up next right here on Enter the Jungle. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. He is Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine. Catch us every Tuesday at 8 Eastern right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk Weekly on Valley Sports. And Andrew, let's get to our Bengals draft superlatives. And let's start with your favorite pick in the draft. And by the way, heads up, full disclosure, everyone, we have not discussed these. We may have duplicates, but we will see here who Andrew's favorite pick is in this draft. Well, unlike your choice of the word superlative for this segment, James, I'm going to go very boring here, and I, it, it's Amarius Mims. I, I know that's a boring answer, but I think between the first round dictating the rest of this particular draft and simply checking that box, the protect Joe Burrow crowd is satiated from it. It's frankly the one player that – the one pick of the 10 that has, in my opinion, elite potential. I don't know that I can say that in the conversation with anyone else in this draft. I understand that comes with – it being a first round overall pick, but I think that, you know, you could say potential for Josh Newton to, uh, you know, I think that's a bit understated right now. Matt Lee, more on him later, but I think that was a fantastic pick. But Amarius Mims, for me, it's my favorite pick. It, it, the guy's a freak, and I think he's going to do, do great, great things for this organization in protecting the franchise. Everyone that watches Cincinnati Bengals talk, everyone knows how high I am on Amarius Mims. It's just, he's... I, I don't know how you can't be high on him. Is there some risk? Is there some projection? Sure. But guess what? There was some projection with Billy Price. There was some projection with Jonah Williams. There was a ton of projection with Cedric Abwehi. There was a ton of projection with Jake Fisher. And I could go on and on. Andre Smith, whoever you want to go with. This guy is different. And you'll see why coming up when I talk one-on-one -on -one with him in a few minutes. But you stole it from me. That's why I mentioned the duplicate thing. Because I had a feeling you might go with the safe answer here and it isn't the safe answer it's the best answer it's the oh man everyone's talking about the Bengals need to invest in offensive line well they finally did for the first time in the Frank Pollock era they take an offensive lineman I don't count 2018 because he left there's a gap in there but they take a first rounder with huge upside this isn't little upside I was talking with someone I don't know if he wants me to say who so I won't do it to him but thinks that Amarius Mims has the the ch a chance to be the best player in this draft. Best player. Not offensive tackle, not offensive lineman, not trench player, best player. And so to get him at 18, to look at this era and say, yeah, Orlando Brown Jr. is the, the staple on the left side. You can get this guy and Amarius Mims who can learn from Orlando. They went out to dinner on Friday night. Uh, Orlando met him at the stadium. They were hanging out and, and walking together and showing how giant those two are together. Like that's your, your tackle duo of the future. It's my favorite pick without a doubt. And the Bengals got it right. They didn't overthink it here. They took the dude that was there. And the first round is about taking dudes from favorite to most risky. Who's your most risky pick? I struggle with this one because we just mentioned that this draft was sort of littered with risk. And even though positionally tight end, we don't need him necessarily week one. We may not even need him for the season, but Eric all just because you may never get anything out of him. If he can't stay healthy, I hope that he does. I, I sort of expect him to sure. But when I define risk, it's can they see the field? If the expectation is that they will be a starter on this team, on this roster. And he's the one I, for now. I love the ceiling though. I do. For sure. No, and he is a risk because of the injuries, no doubt about it. I think Jermaine Burton would be a lot of people's pick here as well. Uh, mine's different. Mine's different because they used a premium pick, a top 100 pick. All these people saying, oh, top 100 picks. you got to value these top 100 picks. You can't trade these top 100 picks. And they use it on a guy that probably should have went outside of the top 100 picks, and it's McKinley Jackson. There was a lot, a lot of value on the board there. And I like McKinley Jackson, the player. But to use it the 97th pick on a nose tackle is risky. It is risky. And it's one of those things where I think about it, and I think the Bengals would have taken Tavondre Sweat, Andrew, 
I, I was out on him pre-draft. I thought they would be out on him. Obviously, they were willing to take some risks here with different guys. I think Tavondre Sweat would have been a Bengal, not at 49 had he been there, but if he had fallen to pick 80, I think the Bengals would have taken Tavondre Sweat and then hoped Jermaine Burton fell to 97. They didn't get him. I think McKinley Jackson, because he's one of the, the only nose tackles they wanted in this draft, was in play at 80. They went with Burton, and then Jackson was still there at 97. I think they could have waited again and probably gotten him at 115 in round four. They didn't, but there is risk involved. So I'm going to say McKinley Jackson there from most risky to best value. Who's your best value pick? Best value is going to be Matt Lee. You know, I, I would say maybe Cedric Johnson, Josh Newton, they, they may be runner-ups in this scenario, despite consensus kind of being in line where they got him. But Matt Lee, I think he should have been taken sooner. In fact, I'm not sure why Dejon Anthony in the seventh round, like why did they even risk taking him when Matt Lee was still there? I forgot he was there. And mm -hmm. I guess the rest of the league did too. But to me, that was the best value. For, I, don't, I don't even know that I'd debate that one. Jermaine Burton is their <clears throat> best value. He comes with risk, but there are multiple evaluators in this league, scouts in this league, that had him as their fourth receiver without the character stuff. Fourth. So not Brian Thomas Jr., not A.D. Mitchell, not Xavier Worthy who went round one, not Xavier Leggett, not uh, Ricky Persaw, not Lad McConkey, not Troy Franklin who fell to, to day three. No, this guy. Jermaine Burton, and I overlooked him because of the character stuff. I didn't think the Bengals would be in, but they found someone that fits them perfectly football-wise. I, I, I don't know the guy, so I'm not going to rip his character. I don't know. But what I do know is, is he can play in the slot and be explosive out of the slot, which they have not had a, an explosive slot receiver since Joe Burrow got to the league. He can play outside if you want to move Jamar Chase to the slot. So guess what? You're always going to have an explosive slot receiver now. You're always going to have someone that can run and play fast, whether it's Burton, Chase, Charlie Jones. I, I, I think it's a perfect fit from a football standpoint. And so we'll see if the off the field, if the maturity, if all of those things, those concerns get put to rest. But from a value standpoint, I still thought, I thought he was going to go to the Browns at 54 overall. That's what I thought. I thought Burton was going to go off in round two, even with all the character issues. He falls to 80. That's why Zach Taylor pounded in the, the, the chair. He was excited, and rightfully so, the best value for sure for the Bengals. That's funny you say that because for me, Jermaine Burton, our last superlative here, was biggest surprise, and that was my biggest surprise. Not because I don't think he's necessarily a good fit for the team, but I kind of had forgotten about him in the sense that looking him over for a potential player for the Bengals, you see words like undisciplined, needs maturity, and I just kind of moved on. I thought, well, the Bengals just aren't going to be that interested in him and i just kind of put it behind me did not realize that the Bengals had him in their sights and that surprised me i love the potential though to your point burton is my biggest surprise as well but i'm going to give you another one for the sake of being different because it did surprise me the double dip at tight end mm -hmm. eric yeah. all tanner mclaughlin i did not have them double dipping at tight end and it's so interesting the Bengals last year it was considered a down receiver draft they double dip at receiver. They find two guys they like in Charlie Jones and Andre Yosevich. This year, down tight end group, especially after you miss out on the top guys, and they get two guys that they clearly like a lot. And Eric All, who has a ton of upside, and then Tanner McLaughlin as well. Up next, we're going to be joined by the man. Number one pick, Amarius Mims. I talk with him one-on-one -on -one from Paycor Stadium. Coming up next. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. And we all know the Bengals, well, they took Amarius Mims. Uh, the short offensive tackle from Georgia with their first round pick. I got to catch up with Mims right after he got picked on Friday at Paycor Stadium. I'm here with Bengals first round draft pick, Amarius Mims. Amarius, one thing I've noticed about you, and you've done about a dozen interviews by now, an entire news conference, yeah. you keep smiling. Oh, yeah, you, you've been smiling nonstop. Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm blessed to be in the shoes I am in today, honestly. And, you know, I got so much to be thankful for. You know, I got my, I got my mom and my dad here. I got a great support system. You know, I'm a Cincinnati Bengal, so why, why would I not smile? It's just, like I said, I have so much to be thankful for, and I'm blessed, man. Can you tell how proud they are of you? I, I think it's pretty obvious just by looking. It's definitely obvious, and like I said, we, we've been through a lot together, uh, you know, good and bad. And like I said, for them to be in my corner the whole way, I'm very thankful for them. You come into a situation, obviously the Bengals are Super Bowl contenders, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, they've completely transformed the franchise over the past couple of years. Orlando Brown Jr. is here. Trent Brown is here. 
is this the perfect situation? If a month ago I would have told you this is where you would land, would you say that this is the ideal landing 100%. spot? Like I said, there's a lot of guys in this draft, and for Coach Taylor and Mr. Brown and you know, choose me out of all the other guys in college that let you know that they have a lot of faith in me, and I appreciate them, and I owe them the world now, man. I just, you know, I want to play hard for them now because, you know, they believe in me. Eight college starts. You've heard it a thousand times, probably. Yeah. Eight, eight thousand, probably. Yeah. And it's, pro it's, it's probably frustrating. Right. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, like I said, I understand. I understand my sample size wasn't as big as all the other guys. But when you cut the tape on, the tape's the tape. And I feel like, you know, that helped me out. Um, I felt like I did some good things. You know, I got some things I need to clean up. But for the most part, you know, uh, I'm glad Coach Taylor and all the guys, you know, upstairs, you know, believed in me, believed in my game, and they feel like they take my game to another level. So, like I said, I'm glad to be a Bengal, and I look forward to, you know, watching my game grow. I feel like a lot of prospects would have admit, would have said instantly, oh, well, I never gave up a sack. Mm -hmm. You didn't do that, even though you didn't give up a sack. Mm -hmm. You didn't mention that. Mm -hmm. Why? I'm sure you know you didn't give up a sack. Yeah, just like I said, uh, I definitely take pride in one-on-ones and stuff, but I'm not the type of guy to brag. I just feel like, you know, I feel like, you know, I just got to find, you know, small, small nuggets in my game to get better so I can so I can keep not giving up sacks, you know? Yeah. So. I, I, I'm sure you see pundits. You were, earlier you were asked about Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. People will describe you as a risky pick because of the sample size. Do you think? You're a risk? Uh, I mean, honestly, like I said, I know a lot of people say it, but I'm, you know, I really don't care what they say, honestly. Uh, like I said, I'm blessed to be picked at 18. And uh, like I said, um, I'm a winner. I know what it takes to win. Like I said, I have the winning mentality. And like I said, Coach Taylor said that's the reason why they came and got me. He was like, I noticed that all the way from, like I said, watching your film all the way to the 30 visit and at the combine. So I'm glad they saw that in me. You mentioned that you, you fell in love with football playing catch with your dad or your dad was sending you yes. out on routes? Man, he'll send me out on routes, throw the chunk the ball, and I'm going to fall in the front. I said, man, I want to be a receiver one day probably. But, you know, it didn't happen like that. I'm old lineman. So. Secret weapon. Secret weapon. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to give, you know, Jamar Chase time now to go to go catch his ball like I did back when I was six years old. You you played middle linebacker, defensive end, mm -hmm. now obviously offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. you, you said you wanted to be Ray Lewis at one time. Mm -hmm. Back in recreational league, because that's the guy who I you know, I, I watched him all the time. I got him, I tried to model my game out there in the living room. I'm doing his celebration all the time when I was like six, seven years old. I'm like, okay. But like I said, I grew, I started growing up here, started growing more out here. I'm like, no, nah, we ain't no linebacker no more. We got to move positions. So, so when, you, when you play in those leagues at that age, they they weigh in and stuff. I never had this issue clearly because I'm five nine, <laughs> but you said they had to keep a birth certificate yes, around. I, Explain I, that. I was always taller than everybody in my in my class, but I was the youngest guy. But um, they made me. They thought I was older, so they made me play two age groups above my age group, and I had to put a stripe over my helmet. So sometimes in practice, I couldn't hit people hard. I had to two hand touch them because I used to like hurt my teammates. <laughs> so it was wild. But. Just just don't hit me. All right. I won't, just, I won't, I won't. <laughs> Uh, is as far like I said, you you've been smiling a ton. Your your personality is shining through. You mentioned you're a shoe guy. Yes, sir. Let our our viewers know a little bit about Amarius the person. Uh, like I said, I feel like I'm a very humble guy. You know, I'm very I'm a, I'm a people's person. You know, um, like I said, I'm just like I said, I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm a happy guy just because I'm so much to be blessed for. Man. I'm just blessed, man. Like I said, I'm living out my dream. Especially now I'm a Cincinnati Bengal man. You know. Well, I just don't say, why not smile? Honestly, I got so much to be thankful for. Frank Pollock, you mentioned how important he is in, in, in during this pre-draft process. 100%. He's a hard coach. He's a throwback coach. He's going to coach you hard. 100%. Well, why, why are you drawn to him? Why did you think you guys had a connection? Because I had that same coach in that Georgia. Coach Searles is the same as him almost, I feel like. And they're going to expect the, the, the best out of me. And, and you know, I'm going to give him that. Amarius, I, I really appreciate the time. I have one more question. I just want to know how you got so short. That's what I want to know. Look, I, I caught you. Hey, you got me. You got I got, spurt. That's right. A second. That's right. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to I'm have to keep my growth spurt. Hand me one of those. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he is Amarius Mims. Amarius, congratulations. Welcome awesome. to Cincinnati. I appreciate you. Thank you. Really good stuff there from Amarius Mims. Up next, it's time for Andrew Fox Miller, the teacher, to grade the grade. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine, and we put out our draft grades on Monday. Make sure you check them out after you're done watching this. But Andrew, we all know your background. You like to remind everyone how you were a professor in another lifetime. You want to grade my grades. You seem to be the one reminding everybody. But yes, I, I'll go ahead and elaborate, James. I mean, the I, teacher. 
Pinky's out. Just to, you know, a master's of education. I'm not giving you an apple. I, I go to Xavier University. I get my master's degree for this purpose. That I, I, I paid all that tuition for these moments, these final segments where I get to grade you. It pays off. It's almost like you're doing some student teaching because I'm going to grade your grading, but okay. I would call out the fact that you gave it an average of B. But if I look at all 10 grades, James, and average it out, it's actually a B minus that you gave it. So which is it? It's unclear. Uh, the rubric, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I, if I were a student, I'd be probably taking it up, perhaps with a principal if you're a teacher. I, I, I'm just, I'm a little concerned. Here's a superlative, James. You're the worst. That's the- This is, <laughs> this is unbelievable. It, it, the, the teacher, the teacher background doesn't understand weighted grades. You think Amarius Mims as an A has the same as a C on day three of the draft? Do you not understand oh, that oh, he is much more valuable in, in, in nailing the first rounder okay, is much so more important than a C in round four or five? Andrew Fox Miller, this guy who talks about how so we're grading a curve. He is, I mean, how he? No, it's not a curve. It's value. Which one's uh -huh. more important, the 18th pick or the 194th pick? So you're going to grade students differently, which is more important? Which student? No, but <laughs> assignments have overall weight. You could you could ace your oh, homework every day, but, oh, but you come in saying. and you fail that final exam. The final exam is the first three grades. Okay, right? Is those first three picks? What okay. did the Bengals do with those th those three picks? They got an A, a B plus. Oh, right. How and did a B you grade plus. them? Okay. There you go. So then a bunch of C's knocked it down from there. They they were in the B plus A wow. minus range, and a bunch of C's knocked I it see. down from there, but they still get a solid B. 86%, Andrew. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to require you to turn in this calculation that you've put together. I understand what you're saying, but this wasn't submitted to me for my review. I think we know why you're doing this and grading me and not grading students. He is Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Erpine. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And until next time, this has been Enter the Jungle.